On Tuesday the 18th of July, the world will mark the anniversary of Nelson Mandela's birth and in the spirit of his example, millions of people will offer 67 minutes of service to their communities. This could take the form of preparing a meal. And Mela's guest chef Sylvester Nair has come up with a Madiba inspired menu. As part of his research for the menu, Sylvester arranged for the Mela team to join him at Nelson Mandela Square where we'd meet Madiba's daughter, Dr. Pumla Makaziwe Mandela Amoa. Hi, morning. She's tired. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, Sylvester. How nice are you? you? I was just thinking, since I know you for such a long time now, and it is Mandela month, and you obviously being his daughter, that was such a great inspiration to me to start off with. But maybe you have some ideas. So I actually have the, this book. Oh, wow. From uh, Kondi, and you know my dad, liked uh, African food, cook sisters, biryani, samosas. Yeah, I'm gonna actually yeah. cook, you know the yeah. beef stew, but yeah. I'm gonna do it with lamb neck, so like a curry stew okay. type of a vibe. I'm gonna put some green peas inside and I'm gonna put some potatoes also. Uh -huh. And then I'm gonna do the sweet chili samosas. Oh, I'll come and join you, definitely. You know that I like food. Thank you very much, <laughs> bye. Bye. With the recipe book ready for easy reference, Sylvester led us to his kitchen where all the ingredients were waiting. Today, in light of Mandela Day, I'm going to prepare a few of his favorite dishes. So for our main dish today, we'll be preparing a lamb curry with green peas and baby potatoes. And then for our next dish, we'll be preparing sweet chili chicken wings with a soy and brown sugar dipping sauce. We'll be doing some samosas we have some homemade samosa par, some chopped chicken, some of the mazaru chilies for the homemade samosas, and then I'm gonna get right into the cooking. In this spice mix, we got a bit of caraway, some cumin seeds, some ilachi as we call it, or cardamom, some cloves, some bay leaves, and some cinnamon. I'm just gonna put a touch of that in, try to get in a little bit of everything. Uh, we're gonna add a touch of uh, truffle oil. It adds a very distinctive flavor and good aroma to the dish. If you take a look into my, my pot, you can see that the seeds are kind of starting to sizzle up. That is generally a good call for you to throw in your onions. It's a mixture of red and uh, white onion. I'm not gonna add too much. There we got that nice sizzling noise. I'm gonna add a bit of chopped coriander to the dish now. This is just purely to blend with the flavors of the onions and, and the dry spices. Okay, so you're gonna just let that go also for about 30 seconds to a minute. Now we're gonna add in the lamb neck straight into the pan. On the lamb neck, I've just seasoned it very slightly with a bit of chili powder and uh, black pepper. So with the lamb, you just want it to brown a little bit on both sides. So about 45 seconds to a minute on either side of the dish. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip them over quickly. I'm gonna add some of my masala. I like it hot, very hot. And I believe Mr. Mandela enjoyed a good tang to his food, a bit of spice. So with the spice, I just wait until it gets nice and spooky, a bit uh, dark in color. And then as soon as I start to choke, then I know that's the perfect time to throw in the tomato or the liquid for deglazing. I'm gonna add in the jam tomato puree. Okay, we're just gonna give that a bit of a stir. Okay, I'm gonna add some of the potatoes to the dish. I'm gonna just mix that in. And that's also gonna infuse a bit with the flavor of the sauce and of the lamb. So now I'm gonna add some green peas to the dish. I'm gonna add a touch of coriander to that as well. And then I'm just gonna pop that onto one of my other stoves and let it go for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then we're gonna go straight into the chicken samosas. We got the lamb going in the back. We're gonna start off with the chicken wings. So I'm gonna start off with a bit of fresh chili. And we're gonna add a touch of my favorite mother-in-law chili powder. Yeah, and a small pinch of coriander to that. We're just gonna add a bit of sweet chili sauce. A nice helping here because we already got some fire in there. We're gonna finish that off with a bit of this Mazaru chili. There, we're just gonna mix all of that up together. So nice spicy coriander, sweet chili sauce. So we're gonna put that straight into the pan and let that go for a while. 
I'm not going to put any oil into the pan itself because on the chicken, uh, the fat content is quite high on the chicken and I have oil from my chili and garlic mix uh, in that as well. I'm going to start with a nice hot pan and that will seal it in on the outside as well. I'm just going to add a bit of the sauce in. We're going to leave this cooking for about 15 minutes and then it should be cooked to perfection. Just to add my secret touch to that and a small crisp to the chicken itself, I'm going to put in some half roasted sesame seeds. And we're going to finish that with a small touch of coriander, just to add extra flavor and a slight bit of color to that dish as well. Perfect, that's done. So now we're going to start with our samosas. I've just put on a pot of oil to heat up. And not many men my age, or not many men, in fact, can roll a samosa. I'm lucky enough to have lived with my grandmother or had the special occasion uh, watching her roll samosas. And uh, now I have the delight and the talent of being able to roll a samosa, make a samosa, fry a samosa, and eat a samosa as well. So what I've done earlier on, I just grilled a, a chicken breast, pulled it apart. Uh, I didn't chop it or anything like that because you, you want a bit of those stringy bits and, and pieces. So I'm gonna pop that straight into a mixing bowl. I'm going to grab some of my Mazaru chili mixture that I have. And in this recipe, I'm going to put quite a nice helping. I'm going to add a small touch of sweet chili sauce as well to this dish, just to bind the mixture together. And I'm going to add a touch of chili powder. Then I have a secret ingredient all the way from Spain. Just going to add a touch of smoked paprika to that. Add a different uh, texture and flavor to the dish. So I'm going to just mix this up just to get all the ingredients together onto the chicken. So as you can see, chickens change completely into a chili chicken, spicy chili chicken now, which is our uh, base mixture that's gonna go into the samosa. Uh, it's always important to, to taste and make sure that I don't burn or over scorch anyone's palate, so. Mm, that's pure, pure power. Samosa par is basically water, flour, a bit of salt. Earlier on, I made a slight mixture of flour and water, which I'll use as a glue to seal my samosa off. Okay, and then we're gonna start by rolling our first samosa. So on a nice flat surface with a teaspoon. Okay, so you wanna start from the right to the left, creating a triangle, but also at the same time, creating a pocket and then you wanna do it from the front to the back, still holding your pocket, and then one more turn, and then you can pick that up. Just let it sit over your index finger in between your thumb, and then you're gonna fold that nice and full, and then straight over, under and around, and there you have a perfectly rolled samosa by a young Indian man. You want to pop that straight into nice hot oil, not too hot. And then you can watch that until it gets golden brown. I'm going to start getting them out of the oil. They're nice and golden brown now. And I'm just going to put them onto the surface to drain some of the excess oil out of it. I'm going to start plating up the dishes now while we wait for Mrs. Mandela to join us for lunch. So glad you could join us for lunch. I got your dad's favorite samosas. It's a bit spicy. Take a bite, tell me how it is. At least you got some water there on the side. <laughs> it's very spicy. It's not extremely spicy. I think, I'm sure you can handle it though. Mm. <laughs> very nice. 